Hello, welcome to the European Open Briefing for Thursday, June the 6th. I'm Rafi Borajan, currency analyst at XM.com, and we're going to be looking at what's happening in the currency markets today. So we do have relative uh, stability in um, in Forex markets this morning. Uh, we saw not much reaction to yesterday's minutes by the Fed of their June policy meeting. The dollar um, is uh, relatively steady, um, just above the 113 level. Uh, we did see a bit of a drop in US uh, yields yesterday after uh, the minutes did show some split within uh, the FOMC um, participants. Uh, in other currencies, the Australian dollar has managed to rebound from yesterday's one-week lows uh, following uh, stronger than expected trade data out of Australia. Uh, the euro and the pound are also steady, although the pound uh, uh, is being weighed by um, weak PMI releases we saw this week for the UK, uh, though the euro, despite stronger eurozone PMIs, um, didn't really benefit much from the data. Uh, and in commodities, oil prices uh, are attempting a rebound after a sharp drop yesterday, uh, following data sh suggesting that OPEC uh, exports actually rose in June, uh, uh, despite the um, the the oil deal um, the being extended, uh, but let's begin with the dollar yen pair. We can see uh, the dollar yen has been ranging this week, currently at 113.20. Uh, the FOMC minutes yesterday showed that uh, there was a bit of a split. Some participants were worried about the downside risk to inflation, given the recent uh, soft data uh, on various uh, inflation uh, indicators, uh, while other participants were more concerned about uh, the, the potential upside risk given the very low unemployment rate currently in the US. There was also uh, differing of opinions on the balance sheet uh, plan. Uh, some wanted um, that to start uh, as early as August, while others said that the Fed should wait till later in the year. Uh, and also th uh, there seems to be some disagreement on whether or not um, the, the, the Fed should slow down its rate increases once it starts its balance sheet reduction uh, we'll, with some members uh, saying that, that such a move would be warranted while others said that uh, the rate hike uh, plan shouldn't be um, shouldn't really um, be tied together with the uh, the balance sheet reduction plan um, so the focus now will be on the upcoming US data given that, that the Fed minister really did didn't really do much uh, to give the dollar any direction. We've got the ISM non-manufacturing PMI and the ADP employment report uh, to, to be released in the US session. Uh, while tomorrow, of course, we do have the the non-farm payrolls report for uh, for June. Uh, let's have a quick look at gold now because uh, of course yesterday we did have uh, uh, that risk off uh, initially uh, at the start of trading yesterday from uh, the uh, North Korea's uh, uh, missile strike test. Uh, there is still some tension in the region uh, although uh, for now um, most market participants are in the view that we won't, we're not going to see uh, any retaliation by the U US. Gold is current, did uh, actually fall uh, yesterday um, before rebounding again. It's currently uh, st slightly steady around 1,220. It's a little bit down on the day, uh, but within uh, its recent range. Um, so the focus will be on the G20 meeting that starts uh, tomorrow. Uh, uh, we'll uh, conclude on Saturday to see what world leaders uh, may uh, decide as an action plan on North Korea. Uh, but uh, also uh, gold is being a little bit, despite the, some support from the risk of uh, there's uh, the the Fed's minutes are weighing a little bit on gold prices because uh, overall, although the, the there was some split within the FOMC, uh, overall the Fed minutes were on the hawkish side uh, as the, the, the base, all the indications we have at the moment is the Fed seems determined to, uh, to keep on raising rates uh, gradually. Uh, let's move on to the Australian dollar. We can see the Aussie uh, dipped uh, sharply yesterday from the um, uh, we did have the RBA minutes uh, on Tuesday uh, 
where the the RBA was uh, not not as confident as it was on the growth outlook as it had been in the prior meeting. Uh, and, but today we did have uh, strong trade data. We saw exports uh, out of Australia surging by 9% in May, uh, and that pushed the country's trade surplus to 2.5 billion Australian dollars uh, it has lifted the Aussie from uh, one week low of 0 0.7567 to around 0 0.76 against the US dollar uh, this morning um, moving on to European currencies, the euro and the pound, you can see uh, they're pretty much been uh, moving uh, alongside each other. The, the euro is currently uh, steady around 1.1350, while the pound is around 1.2930. Uh, the euro didn't really uh, benefit much from the the upward revision to the final reading of the June uh, PMIs. Uh, we did have some damage comments by ECB's chief economist Peter Pride on uh, on Tuesday. Uh, that somewhat has been weighing on the euro. The pound, on the other hand, um, is uh, being pressured a little bit by the weak PMI readings we had this week. Uh, uh, all three, the manufacturing, construction and services PMIs, came in below expectations and were down on the prior month. Uh, this has raised fresh questions about the health of the UK economy, uh, just as when Bank of England policymakers are th thinking about uh, raising rates later this year. Uh, so despite the hawkish tone by the Bank of England, uh, there's a lot of doubts about whether or not uh, the Bank of England will be in a position to raise rates uh, later this year. Um, let's talk about oil now because uh, yesterday uh, oil prices um, did fall sharply in several stages. In fact, uh, early in the day we did have uh, that data uh, showing that OPEC exports actually rose in June, uh, and this was mainly because Libya and Nigeria, which are OPEC members but exempt from the output deal, uh, they have been raising their shipments, uh, and this has been offsetting the cuts uh, being done by the other members. We saw oil falling as low as um, uh, around around 44.50 uh, for US crude. Uh, it was down over uh, well around five and a half percent at the low point, uh, but it managed to close down a little bit better at uh, down three percent on the day. It's currently trading uh, at uh, around forty five point sixty eight dollars per barrel. Uh, it was helped by the API inventory numbers we had yesterday for out of the US, which showed US uh, crude stocks declined by 5.8 million barrels uh, versus expectations of a drop of 2.3 million barrels. Gasoline stocks were also down, um, dropping by more than expected. So that did help oil prices rebound this morning. We can see uh, US crude is currently up 1% uh, uh, on the day. Let's have a look at today's calendar. It's going to be quite a busy day this uh, today. We, did, we also had, apart from the Aussie data, we had German industrial orders, which were uh, below expectations, but still uh, a solid 1% gain there in May. Uh, in the US, we're going to have the challenger layoffs, the ADP employment report ahead of tomorrow's non-farm payrolls. Uh, we're going to have trade data, the weekly jobless claims, uh, and we've got PMI, the ISM non-manufacturing, as well as the market services PMI, uh, as well as some Canadian data as well in terms of building permits and uh, and trade balance. Uh, also worth mentioning, we've got the ECB monetary policy meeting accounts uh, at 11.30 GMT. We're going to have uh, several ECB speakers, uh, including Villaroy, Weidman and Nowotny, uh, to be speaking later uh, during the course of the day, uh, as well as uh, Jerome Powell, uh, the Fed governor. He is due to speak at 14 hours GMT. That's it from me. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.